a gun buyback that forced law-abiding citizens to surrender their firearms in a nationwide roundup and meltdown of all semi-automatic firearms and pump-action rifles and shotguns. 640,000 ordinary conventional firearms confiscated and destroyed. It was an absolute joke and a tragedy. I actually turned in um, uh, three firearms um, and it looked, it, it broke my heart. I mean, it was 40 years of collecting um, and I, I can't say it any other way than that. I felt sick. Um, I had to hand them in because if I didn't, I was going to jail. There's, there's no ifs or buts about that. By taking that gun away from me, um, they've stolen something from me. A right stolen by their government, promising safety in return for its gun bans. But now citizens know the frightening truth. The cost of lost liberty can be measured in the loss of life. It's become very, very obvious, even to Blind Freddy, that uh, the expenditure of half a billion dollars has done absolutely nothing to reduce crime. And it certainly didn't do what the government touted it would do, which was to reduce crime. It hasn't done that at all. In fact, there's been more. This has been a lot of bull and hasn't really done much to uh, help society and with its problems. Cold, hard facts, the anti-gun forces can no longer escape. Armed robberies have skyrocketed, up 69%. Assaults involving guns rose 28%. Gun murders increased 19%. And a new phenomenon, home invasions jumped 21%. An increase politicians insist they can't explain because they're still trying to legally define what a home invasion is and what the penalty should be. Part of the difficulty is that there is no uh, clear uh, definition of home invasion in the law. Never cease to be amazed at the ingenuity of lawyers. If the politicians want a pay rise, boom, that's done in 20 minutes. But to define home invasion, what a joke. I have no trouble at all in defining what a home invasion is. I think if someone sets their foot inside your door, uninvited, they are invading your home and your privacy. And victims who have survived home invasions don't need a definition. They've lived through hours of terror. Arthur Field was tied up, his hands and feet taped, his phone lines cut, while two robbers ransacked his house. And they jumped on me and knelt on my chest and grabbed me around the throat because I immediately started calling out, help. I don't know how, how many men, they start smashing the windows. There was a lot of glass shattering, a lot of noise outside, and I stood in the kitchen, I was trembling. The Zawatskis remember thugs running through their home, demanding money and threatening to kill them. Mr. Zawatsky says if he had a firearm, the suspects never would have gotten away. Do you will stand like you're not waiting till you get killed? Or you will defend yourself? Tell me true, you will defend yourself. Scars that never heal. Citizens left powerless. But it's criminals who have been empowered and emboldened by the new gun laws because the innocent can't fight back. What's happening today is that the offender, the bad guys, are happy to break into somebody's house. They're not frightened to break into somebody's house while they're at home. Citizens deny the right to protect themselves by a justice system that won't. Well, my opinion of the legal system here is it's absolutely weak. Weak as water. I mean, it's just they've just got no backbone. That the sentencing for various crimes is, is, is just pathetic. And police who can't. They're undermanned and morale has never been lower. It's very bad at the moment. It's never been worse. Since 1993, we've had a, a real decrease in over 230 sworn police officers in this state. These policemen have joined the job, police women have joined the job to go out and do it, and uh, they can't even attend it at breaks or, or assaults because there's no vehicle to even get them there. I mean, that's just absolutely ridiculous. Gun laws that have backfired. And Australians who have been forced to hide behind bars and deadbolts. Some are even installing extensive security systems because the firearms they still own that haven't been banned have to be locked up, unloaded, and unavailable. I mean, get real. If I have someone break in here, I've got to go get the bolt, get the rifle, find the ammunition somewhere else, put it all together, and then defend myself. If this other person's got a firearm, it's going to threaten my life. 
No way. It doesn't bloody add up. A political fraud, gun bans that haven't made a difference, and gun owners now struggling to stop a growing momentum against them. The people pushing the removal of guns from the Australian society are already saying that's only the first step publicly. That's only the first step. Now we want the handguns. We want every other firearm. They're warning to Americans, don't think it can't happen to you. It can, and it already is. Unless you, as a firearms owner, get off your butt now and start to oppose those that want to take them off of you right here and now, I would say that within five to ten years, the, uh, the restrictions on gun owners in America will be similar to what happens in Australia. Don't trust your politicians. Get in there, keep on their backs. Be a member of the NRA, be a member of your local gun club. Be part of the NRA and never, ever, ever give up your freedoms because that's, in the, in the end, that's all you've got. If you think you have rights, tomorrow the government can take them away from you. I think the Americans have to be very, very careful because, you know, their rights will be quickly eroded as ours have and we don't have a chance in hell of getting those rights back.